eventually giving up. But what if I told you anyone can solve the Rubik's Cube with one single algorithm? <laughs> I tested it myself, and it's really simple. Check it out! Okay, for starters, let's see what a 3x3 cube consists of. It has three main parts – center, edge, and corner. To understand how these algorithms work, you have to learn the Rubik's Cube lingo. All moves are written down in letters that stand for one 90-degree cube rotation. R – right, L – left, U – up, D – down, F – front, and B – back. An apostrophe means that the layer should move counterclockwise by 90 degrees. No apostrophe means it goes 90 degrees clockwise. When there's a number next to the letter, it stands for the number of turns you should make. In the algorithm I'll be showing you today, you'll only work with the ones in this yellow zone. You can now pause the video and practice the rotations. So, here's the main algorithm. For your right hand, it'll be R, U, R apostrophe, U apostrophe. And once again, R, U, R apostrophe, U apostrophe. It's the exact opposite for your left hand. L apostrophe, U apostrophe, L, U. And again, L apostrophe, U apostrophe, L, U. Let's see what that looks like in real life. Right hand, R, U, R apostrophe, U apostrophe. And once again, R, U, R apostrophe, U apostrophe. Now, left hand. L apostrophe U apostrophe L U. And again, L apostrophe U apostrophe L U. Before you continue, it's a good idea to pause the video and practice until you can do all these moves pretty much automatically. It'll help you later on. Okay, so you'll go through seven stages in today's algorithm. Number one, white cross on the bottom. Number two, the bottom corners. Number 3. The middle layer. Number 4. The yellow cross. Number 5. The top layer. Number 6. The top corners. Number 7. The final goal. Number 1. Solve the white cross on the bottom. The task here is to put together a white cross and align its edges with the right colored center on each side. Here, I'll mix it all up first. Now, let's get started. To begin with, you have to put together this sequence that looks kinda like a daisy. It's really easy and doesn't require any special algorithms. Try it yourself! Then rotate the top layer with the daisy on it, align the right colors of the layers with the color of the center, and rotate this layer 180 degrees. Do the same thing with the remaining whites. And this is how you get a white cross at the bottom. Number 2. Solve the four corner pieces on the bottom. At this stage, you'll have to put the lower corners of the cube in the right places, and the white side of the cube will be solved. Here's where you'll use that RU R apostrophe U apostrophe algorithm for your right hand. Rotate only the top layer of the cube to find a corner that's the same color as the centers of the other sides, and use the algorithm until the corner is in the right place. Do the same with the rest of the corners.
At the end of this stage, you should have little upside-down T's on all sides, ending at the centerpiece. Number 3. Solve the four edge pieces in the middle layer. At this stage, you'll need to solve the rest of the middle layer so that the outer blocks are the same color as the center. In the first case, the layer you'll be working on is to the left on the top of the target position. You must match it with the right color. Here's how you can do it. Turn the upper part to the left. Use the algorithm for the right hand. Rotate the cube left. Use the algorithm for the left hand. In the second case, the layer you'll be working on is to the right of the top of the target position. You must match it with the corresponding color. Turn the upper part to the right. Use the algorithm for the left hand. Rotate the cube right. Use the algorithm for the right hand. Repeat that with all the sides, and you're done! Number 4. Solve the yellow edges on the top layer. First, you put together a yellow cross on the yellow side of the cube. If you don't see the yellow line but only a random set of yellow edges, start doing the algorithm. As soon as you see the yellow line, start doing the same algorithm. And this is how you get a cross. Number 5. Solve the four edge pieces on the top layer. Now we need to arrange the edges of the yellow cross so that the second color coincides with the color of that side. Let's get started. Find one edge that's already in place. Rotate the top layer of the cube to align the edge with the corresponding color. It's important that only one edge is matching. If two of them match, you should use a slightly modified algorithm to mix the edges. Again, only one edge should coincide in color. Keep that one in front of you and use the same algorithm until the remaining edges get in the right positions. Voila! Number 6. Orient the yellow corners on the top layer. At this stage, the task is to put the corners in place with the appropriate colors of neighboring centers. You only need to move them into place. You're not solving them just yet. Find the corner that's already in place. In this case, it's even rotated correctly, but that's not important. And use a slightly modified algorithm until the corners are in their places. Done. Number 7. Solve the yellow corners on the top layer. You're almost done. All you have to do is solve the corners. Rotate the cube so that the yellow side is facing you. You'll work with the upper right corner. Let's solve it corner by corner. Don't rotate the cube and do everything step by step. A lot of people make mistakes at this stage and have to start all over, so be careful. Use the algorithm you already know in a slightly modified order until the corner is solved.
Once you're done with one, move to the next by rotating the side that's facing you and using the same algorithm. Rotate the front layer so that all colors of the cube match, and you're done! Congrats! You now know how to solve a classic 3x3 Rubik's Cube. This method will work on other types of 3x3 cubes too. But the real kicker is that it also helps solve even more complex ones, so just keep practicing and you'll have it down in no time! Did you manage to solve the cube using this algorithm? Or maybe you have your own way of doing it? Let me know down in the comments! If you learned something